I'm Jacob. I'm Yuri. And we're going for a drive. Two thousand eighteen Porsche Macan GTS. The license plate won Macan, which was the license plate from Grand Tour this season. So we're pretty much on the same level. I if, guess. If you know what I'm saying. They did have a turbo, so like we're, we're technically one notch below. Don't worry about that. <laughs> and what did they do on that episode? They did a dog test. Hmm, let's see if our dog also fits. Uh, my dog? Rex test. Rex, oh. Look, the dog fits. Stay in there, buddy. It fits a dog! Did we just fit a dog into a Macan that Grand Tour couldn't? Looks like it. The same Macan plate? Correct. Box test. 10, 11. 11 boxes, pretty decent. You could probably squeeze a bit more if you didn't mind ruining the... Headlining? Yeah, but let's not do that. <laughs> let's not. So yeah. it actually has room for an SUV. It actually surprised me. I thought it would do nine. So that's two more than I thought. Visor test. Let's find out. I'm kind right. of scared of this one. Three, two, one. Ah, uh, uh, pointed. Come on, guys. So we should add that this is our first Porsche review on our road. Yes, around Cliche Corner, around our familiar area. We did the ice racing, which was amazing. That was really fun. Okay, horsepower and torque. 360 and 369 pound-feet of torque. This is the GTS, so it's in the middle, right? Yes, I think this is the sweet spot in the entire Porsche lineup for any car. I disagree, I want more power in Porsches always. Okay, if you have a lot of money, yes, but if you don't have that much money and you wanna get into a Porsche and you want the best handling one, GTS. Speaking of money, this is a very similar cost to the Volar that we reviewed. And the F-Pace. More closely related to the F-Pace because the F-Pace actually benchmarked this car. Can I spoilers alert real quick? Go for it. This is like a million times better than both of those combined. Yeah. They're pretty much the same price, which is insane. So this feels like it was assembled in a lab by a crazy German guy in a lab coat that still likes to party sometimes. But the F-Pace feels like a guy in a shed with a hammer. The fit and finish on this is just absolutely insane. It makes no sense. Like everything is just solid. It feels amazing. Okay, so back to the models. All right, sorry. This is the GTS. There's yes. a non-GTS. <laughs> There's a base Macan, there's an S, there's a GTS, and there's a turbo. Okay, but the GTS is turbo, but it's not the turbo. They're all turbo. Okay. <laughs> so it's a little confusing. So this is a three liter V6 with two turbos on it. It's fast. It's fast. It's not like silly fast, but I guess it is pretty heavy. It's an SUV, but yeah, it doesn't it's... feel like an SUV whatsoever. No, actually, okay, it's not silly fast, but it is like really fast. Because once you get cooking, it's the perfect blend of I need to get somewhere, but when it's sport mode, it's like really sport mode. Oh yeah, so Porsche, you just check boxes, you can get whatever you want. You can get leather vents. You said you could get uh, acid green stitching on everything? Anything, you can even, if you're a psycho, you can get acid green stitching on red. <laughs> that would be pretty cool though. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you literally just check boxes. Anyways, back to the sport modes. So this does not have the sport chrono package, so we only have a sport button, we don't have a sport plus button. I kind of like that there's only normal and sport. Makes sense, there's no yeah. comfort, but you do have comfort on the suspension settings. Yeah, so it like, it's good. So there's no actual custom mode because you can press every button and customize your own modes. And things stay. Yeah, it makes perfect sense, but you can't start the car with the loud exhaust mode, which is my complaint. Yeah. But we are at Cliche Corner, so let's test that handling right now. Okay, that's probably I think, one I, of our I, think fans. I know that guy. <laughs> one of our fans right. at Cliche Corner again. Cliche Corner, sport mode, this thing handles like a car, like a really good car. This handles better than most cars we've ever driven. Cars, not SUVs. Cars, yeah. We are, I have to keep reminding myself, I'm in an SUV, but this handles way better than most cars. Shout out BMW Z4 guy. Yeah, we know who you are. Look, send us that photo you just took with your Canon zoom lens, I think. <laughs> yeah. The suspension's obviously on the firm side, but it's still so comfortable, no matter what sport mode you're in, whether you're in a Sport Plus suspension or if you're comfort, it doesn't matter. And 
This does have air suspension. Yeah. And <laughs> off-road mode. Off-road mode raises it so much. You can jack it all the way up. And it's then amazing. You, then you can dump the rear for loading mode. Yeah. And then your car looks all silly and it's like, yo, can you put it somewhere normal before I start driving? <laughs> I love that you can actually drive in the lowest mode. That's what pissed me off about the Velar. They have a loading mode where the car looks amazing, but you can't drive in it. It'll put you back up right after you start driving. This lets you drive in the lowest mode. So I wanna obviously talk about the infotainment and driving experience with all the techie things, but I think you've got a lot more mechanical stuff you wanna rifle off first. Oh, for sure. Okay. This is about the driving experience. All right. Seating position, amazing. It feels like a sports car, there's, you're super low. There's no lumbar on these seats. No, but you can check another box and you can get the sports seats. But I feel like it doesn't need it, like everything's very comfortable. Super comfortable and my old man back, not suffering in this. That's good. The transmission, literally the best one I've ever used, PDK. Okay. I'm, not, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce what it actually stands for. The best part about the transmission is upshifting high up on the revs and it's It's lightning quick. This is lightning. This is the perfect transmission. However, there's one part which is the worst part of this transmission which makes it also the worst transmission ever. Oh God. The I disagree with him, I know what he's gonna say. The shifter down here, up is for up, down is for down. Which is the same on the Cayenne but the Panamera and all the cars the 911 yes. have down for up and up for down to give you a race experience so it's better on the track. But this car is fun enough to have an up is down, down is up. SUV. Yes. But it feels like a car. My inner Ken Block in me is like, it's the, screaming at the, this. The child in him is screaming. I have a Ken Block complex. <laughs> I need to shift cars like this. And I don't like yeah. how they, they split that across the brand. I agree. Anyways. This does have paddle shifters and they work fantastically. Yeah. You can also leave it in auto and even that works amazing in yeah. sport mode. It'll downshift and it'll blip everything, always rev matching perfectly. I can't say enough good things about the transmission. Never seen Ken Block use paddles. Oh my God. This is all wheel drive and it is rear biased, obviously. The gauge that shows you that with a torque distribution is amazing. One thing I forgot to say about the transmission, it's a seven speed. That's it. Yeah. Would you like to drive now? Uh, yeah. Before I let you drive, okay. sorry to get you excited. Go, go. Launch control. So this does not well, have- Why do you get to talk about launch control? Because it's the best I and also, I want to talk about it. I also like You can talk about it too. Okay. You, you know, you talk okay. about it. I'll, I'll talk, talk about, about it and then you get in and then you talk about okay, it. Okay, okay. All right. This does not have the Sport Chrono package, so technically it doesn't have real launch control. It has launch control because it'll hold revs until you're ready to go, but it will not build boost. So if you get the Sport Chrono package, you go from 5.2 to five seconds, zero to 100 kilometers per hour, which is pretty much the same time as my Lexus ISF. Oh my God. That's how fast this is. Lexus ISF. All right, you drive. Okay. Best part about launch control, no effort. Send. That first shift is so hard, I love it. And you don't have to go through any menus, click stupid buttons, be in sport, hold the brake, hold the gas, let go. Every car manufacturer take notes from Porsche, but you guys have probably been doing that for a while anyways. So. Probably. Apparently Jag has with the F-Pace, so. Yeah, well, they, they missed. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, if you isolate that car, it's not that bad, but as soon as you sit in this, it's bad. Yeah. Anyways, back to this car. Back to this car. Okay, beautiful red seats. I am the worst journalist because <laughs> I was sold right away. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. see a red leather interior. <laughs> oh, well, perfect. Yeah, it must be good. <laughs> It's really good though. The seats are on the firm side, but it's still very, very comfortable. Back seat room, I can sit behind myself. I can barely sit behind you. You can't get anywhere near behind yourself. I have to cut off my knees and then re-graft my legs in order to fit in the back. We've got brushed aluminum or steel on the interior. Looks nice. It has a really nice real texture to it. You think it would rust eventually? <laughs> I don't think so. I should hope so. I don't think then so. Then you know it's real. You can actually get this as carbon fiber. You can get this as wood. Other nice things in here, red stitching, cool down dashboard, cool clock. Love it. But it's Leather. not the race chrono clock because we don't have that package. That's right. And you can actually option the clock to be white, black, yeah. whatever you want. Cup holders. They're in a good spot. I've got my small cup of coffee. It doesn't fit in the left one, but the right one has a groove that lifts it up. I'm going to test it for the first time. Here Let's we see. go. Perfect. Perfect. Gauges and then infotainment and buttons. Deal. The gauges are amazing. The speedometer is very small. It's hard to see. You've got the GTS logo, which is that cool old 90s font that you hate that I love. No, I like it for the logos. I don't like it for the numbers. And that's why you're wrong. So you know how some cars have gauges that like really make the car look old early on? Yes. This is perfect because it is. it's LCD numbers. However, they're made out of tiny little pixels 
but it still looks like an LCD. So if you look closely, it looks fancy. It's digital from when digital was originally a font. Let's move on to that third gauge. Okay, the third gauge is a screen. It's so the best. it can age quickly. It However, can. it is very good. You control it with this little ball on the right on the wheel. You've got your map, vehicle. And, and you can change vehicle, everything in the vehicle, like your boost gauges, yes. your oil temperature, all that kind of stuff. It's fantastic. And how do you change that with your little thumb wheel? You click the button and scroll, and then there's a back button. And what angle is that thumb wheel at? Uh, the perfect angle. What is that? That's like, like a 45? Yeah, yeah, it's at 45-ish. It's the perfect angle for when your thumbs are resting on it and you don't have to go out of the way. On the left side, we've got a ball for the volume controls, but we don't have a dedicated like left and right channel button. But we do have this little rhombus button here. I think it's a diamond. Diamond, whatever. You can program it to do a lot of different things. You can make it open or close your exhaust. You can have it go through your presets up or down. It's really nice. It is nice to have a custom button. And it keeps it less cluttered or else you turn into like a Nissan Pathfinder steering wheel with Please like don't remind me of that. A million different shaped okay. buttons. That's all right. I don't need to hear that name again. Enough about the gauges and steering wheel, which does tilt and telescope, and I love the center stack or the infotainment. You pick. What do you uh, want to talk about next? Let's go center stack. All right. Love it. At first, very overwhelming. Yes, you get in it, you're like, "Oh my god, what is this?" 30 seconds later, I know where everything is. Yeah, and it makes perfect sense and it saves you from putting things like your heated seats and your climate into your infotainment to control with touch. Exactly. The only complaint I have is that sometimes you can't see certain lights against the chrome when it's really sunny out. Okay, now infotainment. It's not anything special. It's not. It doesn't rewind satellite radios, which is disappointing. It has Apple CarPlay. It doesn't have Android Auto, which is amazing. <sighs> no, it's terrible. I love it. Come on, Porsche, please. Like, Android Auto, come on. No. You, you're discriminating against half the population. Probably more than half. Probably more. Yeah, but they're all wrong anyway, so. No. I think they're trying to make this infotainment as timeless as possible to match their LCD stuff. You know what it reminds me of? The Volkswagen infotainment. It is similar, yeah. Volkswagen is the parent company, so there's and, probably a little bit of influence in there. And the screen is nice and small, and like I'm not upset, I'm not mad. Exactly. I know if I click tuner, I'm going to my radio map. It's pretty decent. It's and the got navigation the, looks nice, too. Yeah, and it's got like the 3D, uh, mapping on buildings downtown and stuff like that. It looks great, works great. And there's even some custom settings, even for your climate, which Yuri doesn't like auto climate, but you can actually adjust it so that it's a little bit softer auto climate. Yeah, and I like the way those menus look. And the last thing we're gonna talk about with the interior before we get into the looks, this little CD player area. With your SD cards and your SIM slots. It's cool how they cover it up with that and they don't show it, like you don't need to see it. I like it, it's, there's, it's weird, but I like it. I believe you can get a Porsche logo there as well. You should get a portion. You literally of can do anything that you think. You just have to take another box. Anyways, let's get into the looks. You know what I want to start with? The hood. Open. We don't open many hoods on this show, but I'm opening this one and it looks amazing. The second I popped the hood and I saw it go up around the lights, I'm like, yes. You knew it was going to happen. You need to pop your hood in public just so people can see that you got a cool hood. And then stick your head through it. Yeah. So people really know you have so a So people cool know hood. you're a child. Yeah. Can I talk about one more interior thing that I forgot? All right. Okay, when you open the trunk, the privacy cover, it's got that net underneath it. That is really cool. Super privacy. Back to the looks. Yeah. Do you like the look of the Macan? I absolutely love it. Do you like it more than the look of the Cayenne? I think so. I do because it's a smaller, more compressed, cool looking SUV. It is a compact SUV. It's got nice, big, fat, wide tires. Yeah, look, they look amazing. Really they're, good. They're 20s. The wheels look really nice. You can option different ones, but these ones look great. Nice, big, red Porsche brake calipers. Yes, and you can get carbon ceramics if you take another box, which are yellow, and they look even fancier, and they cost a lot of money. I like the front bumper. I like the way it looks. Yeah, and there's actually vents in the grills for intercoolers and stuff and brake vents. The headlights and taillights are really cool. They are but I've got a pretty decent little rant about them. Start on the headlights, please. The headlights look amazing in off mode where they're all black. I think that's super cool. They look good in headlight mode, but I don't like the four little LED daytime running light mode. I understand where you're coming from, but I don't mind it at all like because it, it's different. Yeah, it's different, so it gets points, but I just don't like the look personally. All right, fair enough. Okay, tail light rant now. Tail light rant. I like how the tail lights look. I like how they're like naturally smoked. That's on GTS only. The thing is, the daytime running light is the little line that goes across. Yes, it is. And when you hit the brakes, then the whole circle outline goes on. I want the circle outline to be on while driving. I want that to be the daytime running light. I fully agree. And we got that little spoiler at the back. Looks pretty cool. Yeah, it's part of the whole body. Like, the shape of it looks good. Like, I've got the hugest rear quarter panels in my rear view mirror. Yeah, that's very 911-like. That's what I love. That's why it feels like you're in a car. 
specifically a Porsche car, well, specifically a 911. The handling too. Yeah, exactly. That this makes, handles like nothing else. That makes you feel like you're in a, in a car the most. Yeah. The rear end looks great. I love the exhaust. The exhaust sounds great, which we haven't really talked about. I love how it sounds. Crackles pop, sport mode, absolutely love it. Looks amazing. Rear diffuser, sold. It's like an adulty sound. Oh, it's the smoothest sounding V6 ever. Do you think Porsche exhausts are better than AMG exhausts or are they just two different exhausts that need to live together and it's fine? Yes. They just, they both exist and they both exist properly. I love my V8s. I love those exhaust sounds. There's just something about those, but this is a different level. This is just refined smoothness. That is just silly, crazy German redneck type style yeah, of the V8 stuff. German redneck. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm okay with both. I love both. Okay, enough about the looks. Let's talk about the price. Uh, we said it was close to the Jag. Yeah, so this starts at $76,000. For a Porsche. For the GTS. If Can you get the base, it's even cheaper. Canadian. Yes, obviously, we are Canadian. This one, as it's optioned, $85,760 And this to be is, specific. This is pretty optioned out. It's not even that optioned out. This okay. only has like five options. But essential options. Yes, it has all the essentials. I know I'm missing a Sport Plus button and that's the only thing that bothers me so I would have to get the Sport Chrono package. And that's it. I'm good with everything else. So since this is similarly priced to the Jag and the Velar, yes. is there any reason you would take either of those over this? No. Me either. There's no chance in hell I would ever pick that after driving this. Exactly. That's what I'm saying too. If you think we're wrong, leave a comment below. Yes. And share the video with your friends. Tell them to comment under your comment. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell and patreon.com slash the straight pipes. Yeah. And get ready for more Porsches and hopefully way more Porsches because I love Porsches. Yeah. There's just something about them. Speaking of that, did we say the name of the brand correctly? Porsche? I think we did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> Tell us if we're wrong in the comments anyways. You guys probably will. Yeah. I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. This is a subscription break. Don't subscribe. forget to subscribe. Subscribe right now. Subscribe. We didn't even, we didn't do that. Rex, sit. You only listen to Rex, sit. <laughs> Sit. Sit. Rex, come here. Sit. Rex, sit. What a good. Yo, we should start the sit scription break. Maybe we should. Rex, down. Now the down scription break. Oh! Rex, down. Down scription break. Rex, up. Rex, paw. Paw scription break? What about the other one? Pause scripture break number two. Yeah, we gotta end this. <laughs>